Okay, so in Pi News 54, I was using this operating system, 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye, and uh, I've installed KDE Plasma, and uh, I've been using some of the themes, and I thought I'd show how that works and how I set it up. But uh, instead of using it on the Samsung bar, I'm going to use it on my fastest SSD, which is the crucial one here. I'm still going to keep Twister OS on this Kingston drive, so I'm going to have two sort of main OSs. But I'm starting to switch over to 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS because the performance was just so good and it gets regular updates as well. So let's plug in my crucial drive, the drive I want to write to. And I like this SATA cable because it's nice and short, so it's about as neat as I can get on this system. And you can see that my drive has been added, this pop-up comes up. So I want Raspberry Pi Imager, so let's start that up and choose OS, Raspberry Pi OS Other, and 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS. Choose Storage, so I'm looking for my 240 gig crucial drive, and hit Write, and Yes. And I'm also finding that the system doesn't seem to mind two USB 3 drives, and I've definitely had that in the past on a 32-bit OS. Okay, so that took no time at all. So let's close all this down. And you can do Control Alt Delete and you get a really nice looking shutdown screen. So shut down. So I can switch that off, unplug my Samsung drive, and then boot up with the newly written 64 bit Raspberry Pi OS. So I've logged in for the first time and I'm just going to update the software. Okay, so updates applied and restarted. Let's do Control Alt T to open a terminal and type in sudo apt install kde-plasma-desktop and this takes a little bit so we'll leave it to do that so let's hit OK and in one of the guides it said I pick SDDM so I'm going to go with that OK so let's reboot OK so already looks different so if we hit the drop down and go for plasma and pop in our password and enter so this is how it starts off without any extra themes on it uh, if I press the Windows key you can see that comes up. What you'll find, if you apply different themes, that doesn't always work. And you can see it went down a bit slowly. Uh, so what we need to do, uh, and I had this on the other operating system, is turn off Compositor. So click on that and enable Compositor on Startup. So let's turn that off and apply. So now it will feel a bit snappier. I'm going to reboot it anyway. So now if I press the Windows key, it's much snappier. You can see it's instantly responding to what I do. Uh, and if I start typing in Chromium, we can launch Chromium. And let's go to Extensions. By H.264.05, we want to hit the three dots and Options. And we want to block 60 FPS. And let's close that down. And I can close this down as well. Now let's change that theme. So if we press the Windows key and type in Theme, and global theme. You can see we've already got Breeze Dark, which is nicer anyway. So if I click that and apply, we can see that already looks better, or to my eyes at least, um, but I'm not a big fan of the icons. So let's go for Get New Global Themes, and we can either search, so we say we put in something like Windows, and you can see it comes up with various things, but the one I was using previously was I think Mars, yeah, Sweet Mars KD, I think that was one of the ones I was using. Uh, but let's do that one, Install, now one thing you may notice is, as soon as you change a theme, the Windows key stops working. Uh, so if I press the Windows key now on my keyboard, nothing happens. Whereas before, it was doing the same effect as clicking on here. So it was calling up this search and all the apps. There's a way of restoring this. So you've got to right click the KDE icon down the bottom here. Configure Application Launcher. Click on Keyboard Shortcuts. Click on None. And press Alt, Windows and F1 and then click apply and OK. Now if I press the Windows key, it comes up. Just the Windows key on its own. And it seems to do that, lose that Windows functionality every time you install a new theme. So just make it work again by doing that fix. OK, so I've downloaded a load of themes now and uh, Sweet Mars is one of them. So if I click on Sweet Mars, use the desktop layout from theme and apply you can see that it changes into that theme. If I want to try another one, so say this material one, use the layout and apply. And this one obviously shows a desktop as well. Not too keen on the icons on that one, so let's try one more. Actually, the Mondrian one was an interesting one. I saw that on a, on a website. It looks pretty decent. Oh, shame it hasn't picked the desktop. So if I right-click on the desktop 
and we can do wallpaper from that and they should be in here somewhere. Ah, here we are, Mondrian wallpaper. It kind of matches the theme. Hit apply and OK. Yeah, something a little different. What happens if I press the Windows key? So the Windows key is not working, so again, I could apply that fix. But I think I'm going to change the theme one more time. And I'm going to try out Sweet. Oh, I didn't use, use Desktop Layout from Theme. So let's apply that again. Oh, not a big fan of the bar at the top. OK, I'm going for Mars again, Sweet Mars. OK, so I've settled on Sweet Mars. I do like that as a theme. I was using it in my previous video. So let's close this down. And he's put a Desktop Background on it. Obviously, you can download your own, but I'm just going to try this one for now. Although I don't like the writing on it. Let's try this one. Yeah, that'll do for now. Now, at the moment, I've got uh, Conqueror as the web browser, so I'm going to get rid of that one. And let's try putting Chromium in there. So if I press the win So the Windows key's not working, so I need to apply that fix again. Keyboard shortcuts. Click on none. If you've got an FN button on your keyboard, you need to press that as well. And let's say, there you go, that's better. So let's try Chromium. And let's right click that and pin to Task Manager. There we go, so we've got Chromium there now as well. I definitely like the fact that you've got this show desktop option. So if I open up a few apps, if I've got three apps open at the moment and I click the show desktop, I've got a clear desktop and then click it again and it comes back. I really like that. Uh, the clipboard is cool. Uh, so you can see I had a lot of errors trying to download those themes. It was just that the server was down at the time. So sound is down here, all your Bluetooth options. I definitely like the way it handles the removable drives. This KDE Connect, so I've got a Galaxy S8, you can see, uh, which has the KDE Connect app on it. Uh, which you download from the Google Play Store. Now it's detected my Samsung phone uh, on its own, just the fact that it's on. Uh, I have installed the KDE Connect app, so let's tap on that. And let's see if we can set it up, because it was set up in my other system. So if I do unpair, now I'll do pair again, so you can see it says Raspberry Pi. Request pairing. And accept on my screen. So now we've got some functions that work on the Pi. Uh, so, for instance, Slideshow Remote uh, gives you a pointer. And this is a pointer on the screen. You can see it almost looks, works a bit like an LG remote control. Uh, now, I haven't really tried it with Slideshow. I haven't got any very many photos on there at the moment. But, yeah, it's quite a cool feature. And you've got, like, a plus and minus. And there's various different other things on there which I haven't really gone through uh, at this stage. But have a look at the Google Play Store and see all the things that you can do with that app. But, yeah, something else which is on there. So I like the way the Files app looks, uh, although it doesn't seem to find my NAS drive. It needs a bit of configuration for my NAS drive, but there is another Files app in there. So if we press the Windows key, start typing Files. Uh, PC Man is the one that comes with Raspberry Pi OS, so you have a choice. As you can see, it looks a little bit different, but I like the way this finds my network. So Go Network, it finds my WD NAS drive, and I can just connect into it. And somewhere in here, I have some Raspberry Pi script. Now, I haven't looked at this for a while. All right, in all Pi, probably under commands. Yeah, auto install programs. So I've used this in previous videos before, um, but basically it auto installs uh, some of my main use programs. So if I hit Control A, let's copy that into a terminal. So Control Alt and T. We also get two terminals on this, I think, because, uh, and you could always delete some of these if you want. So if I type it, start typing terminal, so LX terminal and console. So if we do LX terminal, you can choose whichever one you want to use. Let's use this one, paste that in. And this is going to install, uh, what have I got in here? Raspberry Pi Imager, Gparted, NeoFetch. So let's hit enter, and it just does it all on its own. And I'll put this in the description so you can do it yourself if you want to. And you can also modify it if you don't want all the apps that are there. Pi apps and Pi Kiss. So that's all done. I'm going to reboot, although I probably don't need to. And I've just launched Pi apps and it looks like there's an update because I can't remember seeing this before. So you've got app list style. You've got various different things in here. Check for updates. Let's go with weekly. Text editor. Let's go with mouse pad. Yeah, very nice. So let's hit save. 
and let's launch PyApps again. So Windows key, start typing PyApps. And let's get another app store, so Synaptic. Let's just type that in. Just gives us another tool for installing apps. And install. We do have another app store here. Um, and I haven't really tried this much, but this is the one that gets installed with KDE. Uh, and it's a bit nicer to use than the official Raspberry Pi one because everything has a nice graphical interface on it and looks pretty decent. So let's just show the performance of the web browser. So launch Chromium and we'll do a search for Lee PSP Video HDR. Oh, we've got DuckDuckGo as our uh, search engine. Let's change that. So settings, search engine. And we can change that to Google, close that down, and let's try that again. Let's do it up here. Yeah, it's better. So let's play that, and we'll put it full screen and go into 1080, and put on stats for nerds. So 1080, full screen. And stats for nerds. Yeah, that's pretty decent. Happy with that, and I haven't even overclocked yet. So this is running because it's bullseye on a Pi 4 8 gig, one of the newer Pi 4s. Uh, it defaults to 1800, but I know I can go up to 2147, so I'm going to do that. So Control Alt T to open a terminal. sudo nano forward slash boot forward slash config dot txt and let's find the overclocking bit so arm frequency change that to 2147 over underscore voltage I find 8 works better with my Pi 4 8 gig at this overclock so control X Y and enter let's reboot that Okay, so let's run NeoFetch, Control alt t uh, just to test that overclock. Uh, and as you can see, I'm running at 1920 by 1080, 64-bit OS, and it's running at 2.2 gigahertz. It's actually really running at uh, 2147, but the Pi always misreports it as 2.2. Yeah, so I'm happy with that. I'm really looking forward to using this operating system. Uh, it definitely seems to work very well for me. It seems nice and swift. The web browser performance is good. Compatibility should be good now because it's running Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit. And if you want to back this operating system up, I've got several videos on backing up to an SD card or an SSD, also shrinking the image. Because uh, I often find with the Pi, uh, some things like setting up something like, say, Windows 95 in Dospian takes a lot of attempts. So uh, just to be able to back up an operating system that you've taken some time and configured it and got it how you like it uh, is worth having. So let me know in the comments which theme you prefer to use in KDE. Uh, there's a lot of choice there. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.